Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to download and install My Test Case Manager. All materials Creative Commons Zero License, which means it's free for you to use, extend, and distribute. Do what you need to with it. First up, where is My Test Case Manager located? So the primary location is out on GitHub. It's under Data Research Labs, and then the project My underscore test underscore case underscore manager. In GitHub, now that we've clicked down through to the project folder, this is the screen we see. If there was source code, it would be available here, but there is none. There's just the downloads, it's an Excel file. So those are available here. If you click down into the folder, you'll see two. We'll look at those in later. And the uh, sample files, look at those in different video. You can click into there and see the test case manager in use on some simple projects. And then the thorough documentation is all listed out here. 15 plus pages of screenshots and notes on how to use the tool and a bunch of tips and tricks and stuff. So GitHub has it all. Uh, other sites, I route the traffic through to GitHub. That's the central repository. Secondary site is SourceForge and that just all points back to GitHub, but it increases access. Next up, making a decision. Which template to download, the regular or the large? There are two templates currently. You can choose one or both to download. The differences are basically that the regular has a max of 300 test cases and the large has a max of 5,000. You don't have to use them all, but that's what's available. Other than that, all the tabs are the same. So the My Test Case Manager XLSX has 300 test cases and one worksheet. Test cases in the worksheet. For the large, My Test Case Manager underscore large, it has 5,000 total test cases spread across eight worksheets, TC1, 2, 3, 4, and there's 625 rows or test cases per worksheet. Ah, type of. Um, you can rename these, double click, change it to whatever you want. You could, eh, I wouldn't delete the worksheets, I'd leave them. But you could, you could delete them. You could delete rows, but you could insert rows, but I would, in general, to avoid messing up the formulas unless you know what you're doing, just pick one of them and go. If you don't know, pick the big one, and put 50 test cases in there give it an application name for your release. Maybe you have a second component you're testing, so double click, change the name on this one. And if you're only using two or three of them and you're only using 50 cases in each, fine. The blanks don't hurt anything, they don't slow it down. So pick a template and run with it. In GitHub, when you click into the download folder, here's what you see, the two files. And you just click on either one and download it and we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Next up, how to download My Test Case Manager. So the first step is we're gonna open a browser and you could just go down in this YouTube video and links below and click the link that'll jump right to the downloads folder, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna type in github.com. We're gonna hit enter. It's gonna go to the root of GitHub. And then from, well, we gotta wait. And then from there, we're gonna do a slash, all one word, data research labs our company, hit enter, and then there is all the stuff that we have out on Data Research Labs. And right now, my test case manager happens to come to the top. Uh, as we do things, it may move around to the bottom or whatever. And you could always just come in here and type my test, and it would filter it. And we are going to go ahead and click my test case manager. And you'll notice as we saw earlier, there's the code, here's a bunch of folders, here's all the documentation, screenshots, table of contents, you can run through all that, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna jump back to the top. I'm gonna to click download, and I'm gonna make a choice, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the standard. So I'm gonna click that, and when I do, if, if this was actual source code readable, you would see it displayed and come up, but it's not. It's XLSX, which is binary, or I think it's actually stored as XML now. But anyway, you can't see it, so we are just going to hit the download button. And typical of a browser, there it is. It's done downloading. And there's many ways to do something with that downloaded file, but what we're gonna do, what I like to do, is I like to, uh, show in folder. I don't want to open it or open it and have it run. I want to show it in the folder, have the folder sitting here, and then I can move it around and deal with that file in the next step. So that's what we're going to do. So we're ready to move on to the install, quote, air quote, 
because it's not an executable. There's no setup exe. It's simply a file and we're going to configure how we deploy it. That'll be the next step. Next up, how to install my test case manager. So we're starting with the file in the downloads folder from the last step. And then I'm going to browse out on another folder and I want to determine where I want to keep all of my test cases. So I made a C colon backslash tools directory and then I'm going to make a folder and call it my test case manager. And under my test case manager, that's where I'm going to keep all my test cases. Now I could make additional folders for projects. I'm not going to. I'm just going to string out each Excel file as its own project name. But you could do that. You could also optionally put this file out on a network share and rename it for a project and have and put it in shared mode, the Excel file, and have multiple people use it concurrently on a small team. That's an option and you can Google how to do that or in a different video I'll show how to do that at some point. But for now, we're gonna run it locally. Because after all, it is my test case manager. It's meant for individual contributors, even though you can run it for mid-sized teams shared across the network. So uh, let's copy this. Actually, I'm gonna drag it and drop it. Then that empties out and cleans up my download folder. So there we go, I have it located here. Um, you could leave it named that way, but I typically don't. I typically rename it MTCM for my test case manager, and then I give it a project name. So let's say I have a project, fictitious project, Spark ETL conversion. So I would just name it Spark ETL conversion like that. And now I could copy and paste it, paste it, paste it. And if I have a project that's some other project, I don't know, instead of Spark, maybe I have a ETL conversion, etc. And I'm not going to rename the rest of them, I'm just going to get rid of them. But you could set them up that way, or you could set up folders, especially if you're going to, for whatever reason, have. Actually, folders aren't a bad idea. Uh, folder Spark ETL conversion. So maybe I <coughs> move it there. And maybe this becomes my sprint 01 copy. Or actually, it might not be a bad idea. What is it 2021? Sprint 01. And that way, you would do all your testing. And if you wanted to regression test, you would copy paste it. And sprint number two. Now you have all your test cases written and you keep going from there and then you have history. So that's one thing you could do or inside for, you could later take and move and copy this and keep a history inside test cases sprint one, two, three, four. I don't know, it's up to you, whatever you wanna do. This way works pretty good because then you have a static copy, it doesn't change and the file doesn't get big. And the reason I bring it up is because you'll wanna decide that when you're setting up your folder and file structure and naming convention and all that. But there we go. We are set up and ready to go run a test in the next step for the, the first run. I'll just leave that. Call it good there. And finally, how to configure security on the first file open. So as a security precaution, when you open an Excel file in a new folder for the first time, especially when you pull down off the internet, Microsoft prompts you. So let's go pop that open maximize the screen and there you go it's prompting me with an enable editing protected view be careful files from the internet can contain viruses etc so the first time you run it that's going to happen now if you forget or don't pay attention to that which happens to me sometimes when i'm in a hurry and you come down here and start typing nothing happens because the file's locked you can browse but you can't change anything and so if you ever type and go, oh, what's going on? Remember to come up here, first time you open the spreadsheet in a new folder from the internet, click Enable Editing. And now I can type. And now to play this out to the end, let's go ahead and see what happens when we close. You wanna save? Yes. And if we reopen, it doesn't ask us anymore because at this location, Windows and Microsoft Excel knows that this file is safe to use. So I can close it and reopen it, save, not save, whatever. It's gonna remember. Now, 
Now in a fully closed loop, watch what happens when I come to this file that we know I can open, not get the message and close. Watch what happens when we copy and paste it. It's now a new file. Same file, but new file name. If I go double click and open that, Excel is going to go, ooh, protected bill, and I'm going to get asked again. So every time you save a new copy, you're going to get prompted the first time for that new copy. So just a heads up on that. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the left.